Okay. Yeah, welcome to my talk, diving into extension development. Uh, my name is Samuel Merbrot. I'm working for CIB, as you can see. Um, and the reason for this talk is I've been doing extension development for a client in recent times. Um, yeah, and I want to share with you just the basics of uh, how an extension looks like in LibreOffice, and that should um, be an entry point to if you want to start writing your own extension. Um, this is about extension development with Java. You could also use Python or some other languages, but in this case, we'll be using Java, and we'll be using the Eclipse plugin, um, which helps a lot uh, developing the extension. Yeah, this is my one and only slide, and the rest will be just a demo of how that works. Okay, so first, um, I'll be starting up Eclipse. Um, and yeah, the extension is called LO Eclipse. In former days, it was OO Eclipse. It's written by Cedric Bostanat in earlier times. Um, was working for OpenOffice only since some recent changes in LibreOffice 5 and we adopted the extension to uh, work also with LibreOffice and recent Eclipse releases. Um, yeah, seems the internet is slow, but you can find the extension on the Eclipse marketplace if you search for LibreOffice or LO Eclipse. So I will skip this part now. Yeah, to get started, um, at the last Hackfest in Las Palmas, I uh, gave a workshop on extension development, and I created a starter extension, which contains some boilerplate you will need, um, uh, or you will most probably need for your extension. And I will start with this one, import the project, and then um, explain the structure and a little bit how to get started. Um, yeah, this is unplanned. Let me start a new Eclipse instance. Oh, workspace is in use, of course. Okay, so um, you can download this extension as a zip file. That's what I did, and unzipped it. And then I will import it into Eclipse as an existing project. Select it from my desktop. Then it's called Starter Project. Um, First of all, what you need to do is adjust the paths in the project properties. Um, you need to specify which LibreOffice instance to use. Then it will detect the LibreOffice and find out the version. It takes a little bit of time. Yeah, LibreOffice 5.1. After that, we do the same with the SDK. Um, usually, the SDK, you need to install it. First of all, it's a separate download for Windows. Um, usually, it is put in the LibreOffice um, SDK folder, but it can also be put somewhere else, so you need to specify it manually. Okay. 
So after that, there should be no red signs anymore. Um, and you should be able to work with the extension. So this is a fully working extension. Um, what we can do now is create a new run configuration. There is a type LibreOffice application. We select a project, our starter project, give it a name, apply and run. Let me close this first. And then the extension gets packaged by the Eclipse plugin. Uh, the Java gets compiled and it gets installed. There it is with some error. We try again, remove it. Now it's there. Um, and if you go to Writer, you see there has a menu been added, start a project with action one, and it opens a simple dialog. It should open a simple dialog. <laughs> Do we have the right Java? I hope so. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll start with the extension st structure and try to get it working later. Um, so, first of all, um, the basics is a description.xml. That is the information you see in the extension manager. It's an XML file with a version, an identifier, and a display name, and also an extension description that, that is optional. And this Eclipse plugin provides a nice editor to edit these fields. Um, yeah. You can also uh, define the stuff for multiple languages. If you add another locale here, uh, you can specify com compatibility options, which OpenOffice, LibreOffice version, platforms like Windows, Linux, whatever, um, information on the extension publisher, URL to the release notes, update mirrors, and a license file. Yeah. Then there is the package the properties. Um, it is a, a properties file, Java properties, and it's uh, there you can specify which files get included in the extension. Some files are included automatically, like the description and other stuff. Uh, but if you have an additional files you want to have there, you need to enable it specifically. For example, we have a dialog file or if you have external Java libraries, you would also need to specify them here. Okay, the types.rdb, that's a binary file, um, and the Eclipse plugin um, provides you the text representation of that. It uses th some program from the SDK rec view or something like that to display the types that are in there, specified by the extension. Um, yeah, this is um, a compiled version of the IDL files we have here. Um, we have a starter project.idl, which is a service deriving from the X job executor. Um, if you want to have menu or um, toolbar entries in your extension, you most probably need the X job executor. At least I didn't find another way how to uh, make it work that you click on the toolbar and your extension gets activated. So then looking at the code, um, you have the entry point, the starter project implementation. It implements this X job executor. Um, yeah, this code is generated from LibreOffice code maker, it's part of the SDK as far as I know. Um, yeah, and yeah, there is some um, boilerplate code which is for the service implementation and then this is the entry point. Uh, the X job executor has a trigger method and this action string, uh, I will show you later where this comes from, there you can um, break down this action string and do 
your actions. In this case, I'm creating a dialogue, dialogue, action one dialogue. I give it the context. It is like, I don't know how to describe it. Each LibreOffice instance has one context. It's like the reference to the LibreOffice uh, process, something like that. And then I show the dialogue. Um, yeah, registration handler, that is also code that you don't necessarily need, necessarily need to understand. It's uh, being put there by the um, Eclipse plugin and it registers the extension in LibreOffice. And you can have multiple um, services and they are listed here, also added automatically by the Eclipse plugin. So this is lots of stuff you would need to do manually if you uh, build an extension and the Eclipse plugin helps you with all these steps. Okay, so um, how is the dialogue implemented? We go to that class. I have it here in the dialogue package. Um, yeah, it implements a dialogue event handler. handler. That's an interface from Uno. And then um, we create a dialogue. I have, have a helper class for that. I give it an XDL file. We'll have a look into that later. That file is located here in my um, dialogue folder. It's also bundled with the extension. It's an XML file um, similar to the UI files we have in LibreOffice, but this has been there before for extensions um, and allows you to also graphically um, put together your dialogue. dialogue. We will have a look at that later. Yeah. Okay, and then the show method just executes the dialogue so that it gets shown. Um, okay, I want to try again if I can get the extension working. Sorry? Okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> Maybe something like this. Hope it's better. Sorry for that. Should have had a look at the presentation. Okay, I don't know, maybe there are some other extensions conflicting. Or there has been a packaging error. This is the generated extension. It's get, it gets put in the dist folder. Um, Try to install it manually. Oh no, that was the wrong one. This one also. So where is it? It's on the desktop probably. And it's gone. Okay. Okay, we'll just continue with the um, with the dialogue. So if you go to the macros, oh, this is in German now, um, but I hope you can understand anyway. You can have an entry manage dialogues in English, and there um, it's a bit complicated. You need to create a new dialogue, then edit that, this one, and then you can import a file. 
Um, so this is our extension dialog. Action one dialog. So this is just an editor for dialogs. I have some labels in here and the close button. So I can add whatever widgets we think we need, maybe a text field. Now this is a label. This is a text field. Text field one, that's okay. Then um, we can add a button there. Yeah, this has doesn't have the, um, you can only position the widgets manually with fixed size. Um, there's, it's not possible to make grids or something like that. That's not so fortunate, but maybe something for a Google Summer of Code project one day. Okay, so um, if we want to give it an action, um, we go to events, uh, what happens when the action gets executed, then you click on component and name it something action insert, um, insert, then we can give it the insert label name it command button insert. Uh, then we export the dialog. Okay. Now we can try to build this again. The dialog should be updated now. I will try to clean my user profile. <coughs> Don't know what this. Um, okay, we try again. Build the extension. So we have it there, but it's not active. Now it is. Yeah, there we go. There's the dialog. You can enter some text. Click the insert button. Okay, we haven't handled this method yet, but we have handled the close button. Now if you want to handle the insert action, um, I would add a new action to the um, supported actions array. This is my action insert. And I add it to this array. This is uh, returned in the get supported method names. That's a method from the dialog event handler. And it tells um, the event handler that this action is supported by this handler. Then uh, we do something with it here. Action, no, not action, cancel, action, insert. Um, and we can try to read the text from the, uh, the button we have there, uh, not the button, the text field. Our text field was labeled, let's check it. Um, dialog, where is my dialog? Yeah. Um, it's labeled text field one. So I have the dialog helper. There are some um, methods to get an edit field dialog. So then we create this field. And then in this case, um, we want the text from that. Um, and then we try to insert it into the document. I have, 
some helper method somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll just copy this over. It's not yet in the starter project. In my helper, new Java class, name it, how was it named? Document helper. Okay. So this is what we don't need. And the rest also. Okay. Then we uh, use the document helper get current document with the context. Where do we have the context? There. Um, okay. That's our text document. So this is a small dive into the UNO API. It's very powerful. Um, text document punct dot set. No. What's the method now? <laughs> Get text dot um, set string. Is it this? I'm not completely sure. We can try it out. Okay, now I will start it in debug mode. Enter some text. Insert, okay, there it is, some text. Now, if it wouldn't work, I would stick a breakpoint in here if I started with debug mode, um, and I could enter some other text. Um, and then, this is really helpful. A um, lot of times you would need debugging, and you have no setup for the debugging. You just get there and have your usual um, Java debugger. You can inspect the variable as you're used to step through, etc. Okay. So we have some minutes left. There are some other stuff we could do. Are there any questions up to now? now? Hello. Um, one question is, uh, there are many, many uh, already existing Java extensions which are probably not created with this plugin. And uh, the question is how hard it is to use this plugin for, for code that's basically written in an ID agnostic way so that it's not a, it doesn't have a matching Eclipse project and so on. Is it easy to um, import existing working Java code um, to into into Eclipse and use this plugin with, or that's a, that's a major pain. Um, yeah, good question. I'd say it depends where the plugin expects a certain structure, um, but there are, are some things you can configure. So we can have a look how this um, looks like. There is. Uh, mainly two configuration files which are used by Eclipse. One's the .project file, this is the Eclipse project, and the UNO project that is from the um, uh, Eclipse extension. And the .project, well, it's just an, um, an Eclipse project file which says um, 
I have this nature, the I'm an Eclipse core Uno nature. No, I'm an I'm an Java project, and I'm an uh, this plugin nature. So if you add that to the, uh, your existing um, extension, uh, Eclipse would recognize it as uh, this extension should be handled by the Eclipse plugin. There's no automatic way of doing this, but you can hack these config files. And then you would also need this extension, uh, this config file. Um, this is generated when you create a new extension. When you import an existing one, you would need to copy it over. And I think it's possible. I've not done it yet, but these are the two files you need to work with. Okay. Um, More we questions? Have, sorry? Another question? Or, or the other question? As I would have something else for the four minutes we have. So, how does this um, extension show up in the menu and in the toolbar? Just a quick look. Um, we have the registry. This is mapped to the uh, office configuration. It's the same. You can. Um, use the same files that are in the office configuration and overwrite them here. Okay, add-ons that XCU is the main user interface configuration file. Um, there is a node office toolbar. There is, um, just define the toolbar we have. Um, and this is the button on the toolbar. It has the URL. Um, this, this calls our service, the starter project, and this is the parameter that goes into the trigger method, action one. Target is which frame it should target, and the context um, in which modules it should appear. You can add a multiple uh, uh, context there, so it appears in other um, modules as well. I'm out of time, thanks. <laughs> okay, and the same for the menu bar. You can have a look at that. And there's also accelerators. There the accelerators are defined and the window state, it says where the toolbar is. So that's the main configuration. Thank you.